In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I wanted to preach the sermon today near the baptismal font. All Saints is one of the four feast days during the year in which baptisms are particularly appropriate. In January, we observe the baptism of Christ when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. The other day is Easter Sunday, and then Pentecost Sunday, and then, of course, All Saints Sunday. The baptismal vows are what unite us one to another in our faith. We use the creed as a touchstone. And although we may have varying beliefs connected to the creed, we still use it as the base upon which we build our faith. Where we look at God, the Creator, Jesus as Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit that connects us and guides us. This All Saints Day is particularly trying because the tension in our country, the divisive ways in which we are approaching this election, but each other. And it's important to stay rooted in our baptismal vows, which we will renew shortly after the sermon. But we renew these vows, and they talk about seeking Christ in all persons, seeing the dignity of each person, These days, it's so easy to forget that. We get lost in our arguments and in our divisions. But I'd like to remind us that a lot of the conversation has been hijacked by those on opposite poles, the extremes on the right and the extremes on the left, who are trying to decide for the rest of us, mostly in the middle, what our agenda should be. You're either with us or against us. You're either all for us or all against us. The extremes want us to take sides, and they will pull us apart and divide us. And I think it's important for us to remember that we are people of goodwill. We have common values and we share common values, and those of us who are in the center, right or left, but central, need to pull the extremes into the center with us rather than allow them to pull us apart into opposing and warring camps. The threat of physical violence is real. We've seen many examples of it. But even beyond physical violence, there's spiritual violence and emotional violence, which is even more pervasive. These are scary times between the election just the animosity in our political views and in our social views, and add to it the pandemic, the levels of stress, the feelings of crisis, threaten us in ways that we've not been threatened before. And that's why it's important to come back to God, come back to the font, and to come back to our baptismal vows, because it is here that we stay rooted and stay grounded. The Gospel lesson had Jesus delivering to his disciples and his followers what we call today the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in heart. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. And I'm sure none of them felt blessed. Which of us feels blessed when we're grieving? Which of us feels blessed when we feel like we have been wronged? Which of us feels blessed when we feel confused or lost or too meek? And yet Jesus called us blessed. Blessing is the promise of protection. Blessing is the promise of guidance. To be blessed is not to be somehow bubble-wrapped. It's not being protected by things that may go wrong. It's being protected from the despair, from the defeat. It's being protected in a way of death that turns into resurrection. Good Friday into Easter. 
It is the promise of new life, the promise of new birth, the promise of hope. That's what it is to be blessed. When Jesus was telling his disciples that you are blessed, you will see the kingdom of heaven. That kingdom of heaven which is inside of us and all around us. The kingdom of heaven which is God's promise of community, of relationship, of oneness. To be blessed is to be reminded that we are loved by God and will not be abandoned. One of the symbols that you will always see by the font is this Paschal candle. The first time it's lit is at the Easter Vigil. It represents Christ. And through our various ceremonies during Holy Week and the Easter Vigil and Tenebrae, it's a symbol of Christ's resurrection and Christ's triumph over death. It's the promise of eternal life, and that's why it is here at the font. When we do baptisms, when we baptize with the babies or adults or whomever we baptize, we give them these small candles. And these small candles are a reminder because we light it from the large Paschal candle. It's a symbol of their share in Christ's promise of eternal life. It's important for us to remember that. Christ has promised each of us eternal life. Christ has promised us hope in the face of despair. Christ has promised us courage when fear threatens. It may not feel like that, but we also get promise of community. Fellow believers in Christ, fellow believers in God's love, and fellow believers in hope. The waters of baptism a powerful symbol of washing away sins, a powerful symbol of dying to sin and rising to new life, a symbol of connection to each other. When these waters are brought to a new person committing themselves to Christ, We share in that as we renew our own baptismal vows. It's so important this week in particular, this week when so many of us feel lost, whether on the right or the left, red or blue, those who would divide us even further need to be reminded that we are a community. Every war that has been fought has been fought by people who believe that God is on their side. As opposing armies fight each other and face each other, each one believes that God is on their side, supporting their cause, sharing their opinion. I don't believe that. If God is on any side, God is on the side of humanity where there is justice, where there is love, God is there. One thing that both sides of any conflict share is the ability to have love. It's the ability and the desire to live peaceful lives, secure, prosperous, related. We disagree so violently on how to achieve these goals, but at heart, that is a common value. I believe God is on the side of love. And it's that common ground that conflicts have to be resolved. We cannot resolve them through violence, spiritual violence or physical violence. We have to resolve them through our common humanity, the dignity that we ascribe to one another the relationships that we foster and nurture 
and build the relationships into which we have been baptized.